When you think about famous impossible inventions, you think about electricity, the airplane, computers, or the internet. But there's one invention that has impacted people around the world, but we rarely think about. Elevators. They go to impossible heights and they lift impossible weights. So today we're going to go figure out how do elevators actually work and we're going to do it with one of the most iconic elevators in the world, the Empire State Building. Welcome to Impossible Science. How cool is this? The Empire State Building is one of the most iconic buildings in the world, and it's an impossible engineering feat in itself. The Empire State Building was constructed without modern day machinery and in record time. So let's check out inside. There is so much to learn here. Now, I needed an expert to show me how elevators work, so I contacted Otis Elevator Company, and they sent over an expert to explain how everything goes together here. So this is Trisha. I work for Otis. I'm a technical fellow in engineering, which means I pretty much know almost everything about the elevator system. I've worked for Otis for 34 years. What's the tallest elevator in this building? The tallest elevator in this building is actually an elevator for moving workers and freight and material. It's 986 feet tall. How, how many floors travel. is that? 80. Wow. So how fast does it travel to go up 80 floors? It, it travels at 700 feet per minute. 700 feet per minute. Which is probably around eight miles an hour. Now when it comes to like lifting things in an elevator, like uh, the cable thickness. <laughs> the cable thickness on your elevator mm -hmm. is, is five millimeters, is that it right? So some of the elevators that we have here in the Empire State Building have a new type of cable and it looks more like a belt that you wear to hold up your pants. Mm -hmm. That is about the thickness of five millimeters, yes. And, and why do I get that feeling? When you ride in the elevator, you're actually going vertically. So your stomach doesn't travel at the same speed that your spine travels at. It really is dropping. It really is dropping. <laughs> Let's say you want to lift something super heavy and you're going to need super strength. When science and engineering, we refer to that as a mechanical advantage. Now let's say this cardboard box represents an elevator and your next passenger is Kong. Now, Kong represents thousands and thousands of pounds. Now, could you imagine trying to lift Kong up in an elevator? Just grab the side of the box and try to lift up. <laughs> no, really, try to lift it up. Here, why don't you, why don't you come over? <laughs> Just try to lift it up. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, it's nearly impossible. No, no, because it's not your guy's mindset. It's actually because you need to have what's called a mechanical advantage. Now, this, is a mechanical advantage, a pulley. Now, if you were to take a pulley and actually strap it to the ceiling, and you had a rope over the pulley and back down, if you pulled it, it's actually not doing much because you're just lifting the weight of the box. But if ever the pulley head was attached to the mass and the rope went down and back up, it becomes a lot easier to lift. Here, go ahead and give it a shot. <laughs> no <way. laughs> this is the same. <laughs> the magic of a mechanical advantage, but an elevator's not a trick. So, how does it work? What's a better way to learn about a mechanical advantage other than a magic trick? Well, let's get into how an elevator actually works. Now, an elevator is nothing more than a big metal box that has to go up and down. But there are some simple mechanical advantages that makes it easier on the motor to lift the elevator. Can you go over how, exactly how a pulley would work? Like, how, how the mechanics work on this So, this what makes the pulley system or the elevator system so specific to, to moving people and, and being efficient for moving people in a building is we don't wind the pulley up, we don't wind the cable up on the pulley. We actually have the, the cable go over the pulley and we have a weight on the opposite side. Like, like a counterweight? It's a counterweight, oh, it's exactly. Counter we even call it a counterweight. Oh. And <laughs> so when the counterweight is going down, the car is going up. The metal box of the elevator and the counterweight are connected with a cable that goes up and over a pulley. Now, you're probably wondering, what is a pulley? Now, a pulley is nothing more than a suspended wheel with a groove in it. And this groove allows the thread or the cable or the rope that we use to actually not fall out. Now, one pulley by itself means you're pulling down with the same amount of force that you'd actually need to push up on the elevator, which doesn't help you much. But if you start to use more than one pulley together, you get what's called a mechanical advantage. 
I want you to imagine that this kit represents a cable that's attached to the roof of the building or on top of the building, goes down to a mass on an elevator. This will be our really heavy mass through a pulley and then back up. When the pulley is attached to the mass, this, and they're not attached to the fixture at the top, this gives you a mechanical advantage. You can actually tell the advantage on an elevator with a pulley because all you have to do is count how many ropes or cables come off of the mass itself. In this case, I have two. So I have a two to one advantage. It's actually twice as easy for me to lift this up as it would have been had there only been one rope trying to lift it up. So Trisha, where are we? And why are the pulleys down here? So remember we talked about the pulley and the machine that moves the car up and down. Right. Well, if you have a very high rise elevator, you're also going to have a pulley in the pits or underneath the elevator. So you always have the same amount of weight as much as you can on both the car side and the counterweight side. This pulley has a shock on it because this is a very high rise elevator that's going at a high speed. So it's not only part of the safety function, but it's also part of why we give you a very nice smooth ride when you ride in the elevator. Well, thanks for riding along today. And the next time you get into an elevator, hopefully you'll be thinking about the impossible science at work. And if you want to learn more about elevators or build your own pulley system, make sure you click the link below. And I just want to give a huge special thank you to Trisha and all my friends here at the Empire State Building. And for everyone else, make sure you stay curious because the right question changes everything. <laughs>